And we're live. So, somebody asked me uh, recently why I've been doing all my videos live. And that is because it requires the least amount of work and effort. <laughs> Which is funny. Um, but that's the gist of it. Um, we are going to drink a beer or two, maybe. And today's gonna be a Voodoo Ranger Imperial IPA, along with our Kershaw Launch 11. Um, <clears throat> actually, uh, I, my, uh, my wife and I are moving here in the, in the next couple of months, and I told myself I was not gonna buy any knife or any toys other than like music toys for the next few months, but I tell you what, man, you know, these launch, this launch 11 has caught my, caught my eye as soon as I saw, like, the unveiling of it, or whatever it is, at, uh, Blade, or wh whenever that was, but, um, dude, me, a little foamy, uh, but, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a design that caught my eye right off the bat. Um, I don't know how many of you guys have ever played with the Launch <coughs> series knives, but uh, <clears throat> everyone that I've I've messed with has been just like, "Wow, this is really nice," you know, for the money. Um, and so, <clears throat> as soon as I saw the Launch Eleven, I personally was like, "Shit, man!" You know, I mean, if it's on par with the rest of the Launch series knives that I've handled. Um, that's going to have to be something that I <clears throat> try out. What's up, man? <laughs> Long time. It's been a while since you've seen me live, I guess, with my fucking goofy bullshit. This is, this is, a, I, I definitely have thought about you with this knife, for sure. It's like, oh my God. Uh, what a cool knife. I mean, honestly, these things are a hundred bucks, uh, and... I don't know. I I actually bought this at my local brick and mortar store because I was like, I need to throw them a bone. I paid $170 for this thing. Ouch, unfortunately. But, um, you know, I felt like it was the right thing to do, help those guys out <clears throat> in any little way that I can. Um, but <clears throat> it's funny, like the uh, my local knife store is actually a really nice little knife store is is a uh, like a cigar shop and like a um kind of a uh, it's called salida what the fuck is it called salida smoke and cutlery or something is their instagram but so they <laughs> have their drive through open and i like went up to their little drive through window and was like hey you got a kershaw launch 11 in there <laughs> and literally i handle i handled it, it was like kind of Fired it, looked at the centering, kind of gave it a once over and looked at the price tag and went, fuck. <laughs> All right. It was like, 100 and, I think it was 159 plus tax, which is like 170 bucks, 170 something. But I was like, all right, fuck, I'll take it. And uh, I was like, you got any iodine tablets in there? Because <laughs> I fucking, I can't find my damn water pur purification tablets for my bug out bag. And I was like, damn it. Um, I don't even know what the hell I did with them. But, uh, yeah, I instantly, you know, I don't know, looking at the design of this knife, I just kind of was like, shit, you know, that's a cool opportunity to, I guess, to just own an auto. I, I've, I've been racking my brain, and I've owned, man, fuck, man, I've, I've owned 200 knives, you know, in my goofy knife experimenting life. And so I'm just like, have I had an, an automatic knife? Have I? And I don't, I can't think of actually owning an automatic knife. Um, I, a guy tried to give me a cool old Benchmade. Um, it, this was like 10 years ago and it was 20 years old at that time or 15 years old. I was like, no, 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 this is a collector's item. Like you gotta, um, you gotta hang on to this, you know? So I didn't even take it off his hands. I, <clears throat> one of my buddies who used to frequent who was a dealer who went to uh, uh, gun shows all across Texas. 
he was a microtech dealer and so i played with lots of microtechs and i'm like have i really never owned a, a microtech automatic knife i can't remember but i had an lcc a light foot light foot compact combat and i i think it was manual only like that's the only knife that i can think of anyway long story short um what a fantastic knife you know like honestly i i uh I feel like I'm pretty uh, 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 aware of like the ins and outs, what have you, of uh, like the way these things can, are and can be constructed. Um, and you know, for even for like the price I paid, 100, 100, we'll say without tax, 160 bucks, 159 bucks. Um, I think this is a good deal, honestly. I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, that's more than one of my benchmarks for uh, that price range would be like a paramilitary too. So it's like, um, I paid more than a paramilitary too would go for for this. And, and, I, and I still am like, yeah, I think it's a fucking, I think it seems like a reasonable price for this thing. Um, but even better still, these can be had from any online vendor for a hundred bucks, you know, 99, 95 or whatever. Um, and dude, uh, like uh, this is a, it's a, it's a really well-made little knife. Um, really clean, minimalist lines. I mean, like, I think anybody who would ever talk about this knife would, would pretty much say that it's a, it's, it's, it's super clean, even though it has a couple of little, you know, extra added bonus that are just, you know, flare fucking points, but like this little scoop out here and this little, you know, kind of pulley looking um, <clears throat> shit going on around the um, pivot. Uh, I don't know what this is. I'm thinking maybe that must be like a launch series kind of a uh, fucking thing or maybe some kind of Kershaw uh, mark, maker's mark or something. Um, don't love that, but it's obviously not a big deal. Um, <clears throat> for a hundred bucks though, um, man, this is like a knife that I would have no problem just recommending to anybody. I, you know, I'm not super savvy on like the knife laws and stuff. I know that the two states that I at least frequent, um, being Colorado and Texas, both are, um, fine with automatic knives so i don't uh i don't know <laughs> a lot about the laws um it kind of seems silly you know that push a button versus use a thumb stud would be you know make a difference but fucking it <laughs> apparently it does um but yeah i really love the um the kind of integral backspacer thing going on i guess i would personally prefer it to be for fucking whatever reason, I guess, because I'm uh, ex or current, you know, Strider fanboy. But rather than that integral backspacer meet in the middle, if it met on the side, but obviously it doesn't really matter. One thing that's strange is it has, uh, I don't know if it's a two part stop pin or if it just, ha if they just did that to kind of just did a groove on it to kind of match up with this. <clears throat> I'm guessing that's what they did. I don't know why it would be two part. I'm, I'm thinking it must just be aesthetic to match up here. And if, if they did, I mean, that's that's really cool. I mean, that's way above and beyond. Um, little design choice there. Um, but yeah, it, uh, <clears throat> it weighs like two, mine actually weighs exactly 2.21 ounces. So it's a feather light, weighs like damn near nothing. It is essentially, slightly smaller than a small Sabenza. Um, I don't have a Griptilian. A Griptilian would be a good, I think my Griptilian, my mini grip is in my, uh, but I do have my knife, <clears throat> my Pelican box here to do some comparisons. Um, but I, <clears throat> I think my Griptilian's in my truck. Um, let's see here, uh, let's do, oh, I got a Delica here. A Delica is a really good, obviously, comparison. But again, it's going to be, which obviously everybody knows, whichever one's on top. 
is going to seem like it's smaller, but <clears throat> these two guys are ab uh, absolutely comparable. Uh, it's surprising that they, they kind of pulled the whole Shirogora thing where the cutting edge length is exactly or even a little bit more than the blade length because the blade length is dictated by the edge of the handle here moving out this way. So you actually get, even though it's a 2.75 inch blade and the Delica is a three inch blade, you actually get substantially more cutting edge here, um, which is pretty interesting. And then if you hold them together, this is the first time I've actually ever held these two exactly together. Um, you can see here. Um, now, the Delica is supposed to be a three inch blade, and this guy is supposed to be, fuck, I'm gonna fuck it up. Look up the specs, that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> but I think it's supposed to be uh, 2.75 or 2.85 or something along those lines. But uh, <clears throat> I don't know, you know, for what it is, being like an automatic knife, um, this is not something for me that I would consider like <sighs> definitely not like an EDC unless it's just like a fucking toy, I guess. Um, Cause I don't, I, I, again though, I'm considering putting this thing through the ringer. Like as far as like, you know what? I'm gonna just make this my EDC and I'm gonna use it <clears throat> for my carpentry stuff. I actually, I did carry it. I bought this last Thursday. Today is Monday, then following Monday. So I have had this knife for several days, um, but I just been fucking carrying it around the fucking Rona house. Dude, it's it, what a perfect size little knife, honestly. Like, I mean, um, but I did carry this thing at work today. I'm a self-employed carpenter. I'm doing a remodel. Um, and yeah, I carried it around, uh, <clears throat> cut some tubes of caulking and so forth, blah, blah, blah. I tried not to treat it with kid gloves. I kind of was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and use this with my gross gloves. I'm going to not wash my hands when I use it or whatever it is. Um, yeah, it's fine. Did good. Um, good little EDC knife, I would say. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, for me, though, my, I don't know, whenever I go out uh, for the day, uh, I have probably like 20 knives, and it's really hard for me not to grab something like this guy. Um, just because it's, you know, it's already a little banged up. You know, it's tried and true. Um, it's durable. It, uh, I love S35VN. Um, although this thing is CPM 154, which is, 150, I know 154CM is a great knife. I actually have had an SNG in CPM 154, um, but uh, I didn't notice anything spectacular or, you know, um, alarming either way about uh, the CPM 154. Here's the, uh, one of my uh, beater knives for sure. And this thing is uh, taking the licking and keeps on ticking. And this is uh, obviously a Native 5 lightweight, probably my number one highest recommended folding knife period would be a Native 5 lightweight. Um, just kind of compare these two for you. Um, I don't love knives personally that have this shit going on. Um, or it's like a big, I don't even know what you call it. Just kind of some meat, big old fucking meaty meat, um, for the pivot, which kind of, I don't know, in some ways makes you feel like you need to be holding it way back here. I, I don't know. I do my best to not ever think about like how I'm holding my knife. I try to just like, just do a task, you know, and then, and then kind of go, Hey, how am I holding this? And, and you know, it's. That shit really doesn't it seem to matter all that much. Occasionally, I guess, if you're just going like crazy hammer grip, um, you might just fall into that type of place. But I don't know. Uh, either way, though, that would normally sway me away from a design. And, and I would say in this case, especially it just being a small, just EDC knife, it's not like you're going to go too crazy with this thing um, as far as like... 
Um, I don't know, but, but but again, maybe you could. Maybe this is a fucking super durable, badass knife. I, it, <clears throat> I kind of, that's one of the things that struck me right off the bat about this thing, to be honest, was that like, fuck, you know what, man? This being like, say, a $100 knife is for a lot of folks is going to probably be like, you know what? Fuck it, man. I'm going to get that awesome fucking Kershaw. You know what? I'm just going to fucking do it. And then, you know, this is their, their, their knife, their one knife. And, and I, I don't see any reason why this thing wouldn't be just a fucking fantastic, you know, one knife, just kind of beater, fucking do all thing. I mean, TPM 154, um, for those of you guys that don't know, I'm sure almost anyone watching this video knows it's the powder metallurgy version of 154 CM. Um, powder metallurgy is obviously fucking sweet because what it does is it makes, it creates a more, uh, mixed up, a more homogenous version of steel. So they take like a million tiny little BBs, tiny, tiny, like grain of sand sized BBs. And each one of those little BBs is a perfect mixture of, you know, whatever the fucking 16 ingredients are in this thing. I don't know, but it is probably something crazy like eight ingredients. And it's the perfect, you know, 10% of this and 1% of that and 3% of that and, you know, 40% of this perfect mix in that little BB. And they pour that like into a trough and they flash heat it and then cool it off. So once it, when it, when it, uh, um, cools off, it is a bar of perfectly mixed up steel. Rather than take a big vat, you know, and go, let's put a fucking little bit of vanadium in there, and we'll just put a little bit of chromium in there, and then mixing that up, like the the uh, um, typical way of making steel. Um, so yeah, powder steel is, a, is a, you know, hopefully that makes sense, you, you, you kind of can't argue against it, you know? So in other words, what happens is, is you don't have a vein of like vanadium or a vein of chromium going through the mix, going through the slurry and creating like a, a weak spot or a void. So powder steels is always going to be, at least in theory, if it's done right, superior to essentially any other method. Um, <clears throat> This thing snaps, I, it, honestly, the first time I fired it, I was like, holy shit, it's like a, it's like a little rocket. I mean, this thing really comes out. I, uh, if you don't really like, um, hold it tight, it could definitely jump out of your hands. Yeah, you see that? Look at that. Look at this little thing. Whoa. Like it's a, it's a little snappy. Honestly, I, I imagine it'll break in. Um, cause otherwise it's like, why would they make it so, so snappy? I guess another thing I thought of is potentially just so it like definitely locks up. Like if it's just like, would you, do you want it to stop there? Mm, probably not. So it might be just like a safety concern. Um, let's get a, I don't, I thought my fucking small Zabenza was right here, but you know what? It might be at my desk. Um, that is where it usually is. Yeah, my small submins is at my desk. I'm gonna grab it. Two seconds, guys. Incoming. Okay, small submins. I think everything should be compared to a small submins that's a smaller knife. Because if I had to get rid of my entire knife collection, <clears throat> and keep only one folding knife, I, I, I think <clears throat> logically it should be the small Sabenza. I don't know that I would choose that. I might actually choose a large Sabenza, a large Nkosi or a large Sabenza, but <clears throat> logically I feel like the, the small Sabenza is probably the finest folding knife. As far as just having something compact, the whole point of having a folding knife, having something discreet, you know, and then making it also durable, usable, um, and reliable um, is kind of what you want. So in that case, you know, a lot of, <clears throat> in a lot of ways, all signs point to small Sabenza. <clears throat> so I don't know exactly what the specs are in these things, but suffice it to say, the small Sabenza is slightly larger. Um, in the hand, I 
would give the nod to the small Sabenza, personally. I don't know, I just, I think maybe it just might be the fact that this has that point there, and it kind of just gives you a place to go, where this is, kind of holds you a little bit back from getting your fingers a little bit more forward. I don't know. The small Sabenza feels really good in the hand, as far as just like, the way it feels. And it's not to say that this thing doesn't feel good, <clears throat> Just to say that, I don't know, it's perhaps the small Sabenza feels slightly better. It might just have, I don't know, it could just be just a, just a cunt hair more heft or something too that just feels good. I don't know. And the small Sabenza is incredibly lightweight, honestly. It's a, it's a definitely a featherweight. Um, actually, I'll tell you what, let's do this. I, I haven't done this yet. So the small Sabenza's blade length overall is... Just a skosh longer. I mean, just a skosh. And we know the, Sabenza, the small Sabenza is like 2.93 inches. So I forget what this shit is again. But I think it's, I guess it must be one, or sorry, 3.2.85. But what's interesting, though, is I think we're going to find, oh, no. Look at that. The small Sabenza has the, the extra blade length. Or actually, is that an illusion? Because the way that I'm holding the shit. Let's do this. No, it does have a longer blade length. Well, it should, because it actually has a longer blade. Um, so, obviously, no surprises there. Um, I don't know. I guess somebody would have to be the judge. I feel like the fucking Sabenza is the knife, the yardstick to which all knives can and should constantly always be measured against... Mm, I don't know. I still want, I mean, I, I would definitely aesthetically, personally, still give it to the small Sabenza, obviously, but you're talking about, fuck, what does the small Sabenza cost these days? $370, something like that, probably? I'd say at least $350. Let's say $350. So you can get three of these plus get yourself a hand job. You could get yourself, you could buy some flowers. For your sweetie and get the old hj three of these plus a hj for the price of one of these mm, gosh that's tough 31 i bet you mean 31 obviously dude i so want to pick up a 31 i'm fucking yeah god damn it of course you want to pick up a 31 everybody wants to pick up a 31 <laughs> dude Dude, try, you should try one of these Launch 11s. This thing is fucking sweet. I'm actually considering, because I'm moving, I'm actually considering putting all, because I'm putting a lot of our shit in storage since we're taking pictures of everything and we're, um, you know, putting our house on the market and everything. Um, I'm thinking about only putting all my knives in storage. Actually, there's only one knife I would keep out. And that is... I don't know why it's in here, but this is my like work EDC. <laughs> on the front lines. Are you on the front lines? Fucking keeping her, keeping us all safe out there. Do you have the Rona? God damn this Rona. This Rona is some bullshit. Fucking the worst. Anyway, so yeah, I'm, I'm actually considering keeping only my Carothers, Carothers? Uh, EDC and this uh, out of storage until we move. That's probably not going to happen, but <laughs> the COVID lines, God damn, well, you are doing the fucking Lord's work. That's for goddamn sure. Oh man, I do not envy you. You're underpaid and overworked, sir, obviously. Um... Man, I don't even know what to say. I got a lot of thoughts about this whole Rona shit, and um, it's scary and fucking um, sad, and it's God, God damn it! It's just, it's just fucking crazy, is what it is. Um, my daughter lives in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and. I wish she wasn't in the city, I'll tell you that. Um, but 
Some people got to be in the city. I'm sure it fucking sucks. I know it sucks. Um, <clears throat> I, I got to talk about the clip. I have a love-hate relationship with this clip. Um, yep, so I've, I've actually... I've actually carried this knife, what I would consider like a real day of carry, um, one day. And you can see a little bit of, uh, obviously this is like black paint on here. I don't know exactly what's on the handle scales. I assume it's HA3, um, hard anodized black, but it could be like some kind of PVD. I assume it's, it doesn't look like a DLC to me, um, but only time will tell. I think, you know, as, 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 as far as I'm concerned, you know, a knife like this is kind of like a knife like this. I'm just like, it, these knives drop by like 50% in value once you put a couple scratches on them. So in that case, for my, for my uses, it becomes just, it, it no longer is any kind of like currency or anything. It just is one of my knives, you know? And like some knives can be currency, like, like a Sabenza, you know, it can always be currency. It doesn't matter how many scratches you put on it. It doesn't matter what you do to it. This thing always has a good value, you know? It will never be, <clears throat> the, the price of this will never be cut in half. You know, um, you could do almost anything to it and it wouldn't. Where like something like this can easily be cut in half, easily. You know, some scratches, some buffing, some wear, you know, still in totally tip top functional shape as far as like being a cutting tool, but now suddenly it's worth 50 bucks. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, back to the clip. <laughs> I don't know why I got off on that tangent. I've actually con contacted uh, Northern Knives, for those of you guys. Fuck, I shouldn't even be saying this because I haven't even ordered it yet. God damn it. But Northern Knives has like a really cool looking, only place I've seen one, Machine Titanium Zero Tolerance Clip that appears to me to have the same two hole. Cause like, right? Because this is like a pretty common, you know, not super common. Kershaw has all kinds of different clips, but I mean, this, this, you see this on um, this two like vertical um, screw spacing with the thin clip on lots of knives. There's like a Rexford zero tolerance little knife that has <clears throat> really similar similar clip. Anyway, they haven't gotten back to me. Um, I would love it if they cleaned up the sides there a little bit. This thing was just like stamped out obviously. And, um, so yeah, I, uh, I'm gonna try to get a, a titanium clip for this knife, um, <clears throat> just cause I don't, I don't know. I'm just, a, I'm a fucking dickwad and I, I don't like that shiny black, even if it stayed black, which is not obviously not going to. Um, I don't like the shiny black uh, in contrast to this matte. So if worse comes to worse, I would just drop this thing into a um, little can of uh, methyl ethyl ketone or uh, um, MEK. Um, so the clear primer is a good good way to do that is just the clear the clear PVC primer and buy like a small can with a little brush on it. If you drop this into that can and then pull it out with tweezers, you know, let it sit in there for five minutes and take it out, every, every fucking tiny bit of this will come off. What you'll see though is that because they heat treat these clips, it will be all fucking blue and green and fucking purple and shit. So um, you do have to kind of buff out that anodizing. But uh, <clears throat> hopefully I'll get that titanium clip. Um, I personally do not like deep carry clips. There's nothing about it that, I, that interests me or that I want. I can't even believe that it's fucking anybody wants it, and to be honest, um, because fucking gayer than three dudes sucking off two dudes with four more dudes filming. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, I just, I don't really necessarily grab a knife like this out of my pocket. I kind of would more like grab it like this, but I do, I do like to be able to put my finger here rather than just reinforce the pinching of the pocket, um, by grabbing it like this. So not really necessarily, uh, the best way to go about it. 
<clears throat> and a fucking deep carry clip just adds insult to injury. It's just like, yeah, it's, there's no fucking, I, I just, it blows my mind. The, the deep carry clips are a thing. Um, I guess I don't really have a whole lot more to say other than fit and finish on this fucking thing is, is as good as any fucking hundred dollar knife you're ever going to see. Period. Um, I don't care if it's like, you know, Riot or some fucking, you know, Chinese fucking machining sorcery or what the fuck it is. Um, the machining is great on this thing. You know, hallelujah, USA. Um, no complaints. I mean, really, no complaints. I can't, honestly, if, if I was going to say anything, just like... Um, you know, outside of the spectrum of regular ooh and ah is that like, um, Kershaw, I don't know how many they'd sell because Kershaw is Kershaw. They're not fucking, um, Microtech. They're not, um, God, Protech, but they could, I mean, I've handled, I've never owned either one of those. I've, ne I've handled one or two Protechs, just like somebody like checking out my knife and I checked out their knife and, um, oh, they, it turns out they're carrying a protect and then I've handled a couple in like gun shows. Um, but I've handled, I don't know, 15, 20 microtechs. And I, I feel like this is I, not, there's nothing that a microtech would offer that this, like nothing. The machining is on par, you know, microtech has st stamped clips too. Um, that microtech uses smaller screws too. And I think, you know, I don't, I've not even said anything about those. Because I think they're just fucking totally fine. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I'm delighted with the, everything about it. The, the price, the, the fit and finish, the machining, the steel. Um, what can I say? It's a cool little auto. Um, I'm going to leave it at that, dudes. Uh, palabra to Madre. Everybody stay safe. Um, don't murder anybody. <laughs> and uh, uh, we'll catch you on the next one.